Hello, and welcome to Really Big Hat. My name is Jared, and this is D&D Builds, the show where we build D&D characters. Today's character is an angry weapon of war, well-trained, and eager to do his work. The quote-unquote battle rager, fighter barbarian. And I want to address this right away so that there's no confusion. The reason that Battle Rager is in quotation marks is because we're not actually taking the Battle Rager Barbarian subclass. I just think it's a catchy name for this character archetype. And I couldn't think of anything better, so I'm still calling it that even though there's already a Battle Rager. So, starting out with our race, we are gonna want to go for either a custom lineage or a variant human. It's dealer's choice here, but we need that starting feat. And that starting feat is going to be Polearm Master. There is an argument to be made to start with Great Weapon Master if you want to go ham on really big attacks right off the bat. But I definitely prefer Polearm Master for the uh, bonus action attack. That way you get an extra attack before you get extra attack. Polar Master is a great feat. In addition to the bonus action attack that I mentioned earlier, which is a d4, and happens whenever you take the attack action and attack with only a glaive, halberd, quarterstaff, or spear. So, pick up a glaive or a halberd. They're the d10s. They're the big boys. That's what you want. Uh, you also are able to make opportunity attacks on creatures whenever they enter the reach of your weapon. Also, when you're wielding glaive, halberd, pike, quarterstaff, or spear. So yeah, all around great feat, two great features. You get a bonus action attack, and you get a better way to use your reaction attack of opportunity. So, just good stuff all around. Moving on to our ability scores. You're going to want to bump up your strength and your constitution as high as you can get them. So if you're doing a point buy, it should look something like this. However, as you can see, we are pretty much completely dumping our soft stats with this character when we're using a point buy. So, if you're in the campaign that allows it, and it's really going to be campaign dependent, you know, depending on how your DM does character creation, I would recommend rolling for stats if you have the option for this character, so that you get a little bit more of a well-balanced spread. Something like this, for example. This is what my character's stats rolled out, first try, rolling on D&D Beyond. As you can see, their strength got a little bit better, their dex stayed the same, their constitution got a little bit worse, and then all of their soft stats got better. Uh, rolling for stats got me a little bit better spread and more balanced all around. The only hit I had to take was in constitution. So, moving on to our class, we are going to start out as a fighter. We're going to take our first five levels here. And for our subclass, oh, our subclass, I'm going with Battlemaster. There are very, very valid arguments to go for something like a Rune Knight or an Echo Knight, if your campaign allows that. And really, even a champion could work. There's, there's a lot of options for this particular class combination, and a lot of them work very, very well. I'm just kind of a Battlemaster stand by heart, so I am going to go with the Battlemaster, represent them here, because they're, they're one of my favorite subclasses in the game, not just for fighters. Uh, so I am going to run with Battlemaster here. But of particular note, I do want to shout out the Rune Knight especially, because there are a lot of really cool things you can do as a Rune Knight. First of all, when your size category increases, so does your reach from your initial position. Basically, you're taking up four squares now instead of just one, and you can reach from those squares with your reach weapon, so you've got a lot more battlefield control as a large creature than you would as a medium one. In addition, the the runes are really cool. The fire rune is great, the cloud rune is great, most of the runes are great, and they help you Nova on damage as well, so they kind of match up almost with the uh, Battlemaster maneuvers in terms of, you know, going Nova on a turn as well. In fact, I think probably Rune Knight is the optimal way to go. I'm just not an optimizer. I kind of build more for fun, and I just want to build a Battlemaster on this one. So, 
If that bothers you, just please bear with me. Anyway, on your first three fighter levels on the way to Battle Master, you are going to get Second Wind. You're going to get a fighting style, and I would recommend Great Weapon Fighting for this build. And you're going to get Action Surge, which is Action Surge. It's great. Moving on to our Battlemaster Maneuvers. This is the meat of the Battlemaster class. This is the reason we're coming here. This is the good stuff. I'm going to pick up Precision Attack, Menacing Attack, and Pushing Attack. All three of them, I feel, work really well with this particular build, and I will explain why. So for Precision Attack, this build, if you haven't guessed already, is also going to be using Great Weapon Master. We're going to be getting that at the very next level, so we really want to prepare for it. And Precision Attack can help you land those Great Weapon Master attacks a lot easier. If there's a very key one that you need to land, and you don't think you made the roll, go ahead and add a Precision Attack to it, and then bump up your chance to hit significantly. As for Menacing Attack, well, we're going to be taking some Barbarian levels, aren't we? And I've always thought that barbarians should be able to scare the bejesus out of people. So, there you go. You have a way to actually frighten people as a barbarian. You could go into a rage and then use a menacing attack on somebody, and it'll scare the pee out of them. <laughs> Mechanically. I mean, that's, that's cool, right? And last but certainly not least is pushing attack. Now, this one is a lot of fun. With Polar Master, enemies provoke opportunity attacks when they enter our reach of the weapon, which is 10 feet. So they're not within a normal creature's melee range yet. You can technically use most of these Battle Master maneuvers with an opportunity attack, because they don't say when you make an attack action, they say when you make a weapon attack or when you make a melee weapon attack. And that qualifies to be used as part of an opportunity attack. So if you see where I'm going here, if somebody gets within 10 feet of you, you can use your attack of opportunity to make a pushing attack against them and knock them 15 feet back. If they've used most of their movement at that point, they can no longer even get to you. It's not quite as good as the uh, Sentinel combination with this, but it is something that we can use far before we have the option of picking up Sentinel, because that's still going to be quite a few levels away. So it's just a really cool combination and one that I like a lot. Moving right along to level 4, we are going to pick up Great Weapon Master, just like I said. See, I wasn't lying to you. This allows us to take a minus 5 penalty to hit on a weapon in order to get a plus 10 to the weapon's attack damage. And also, if we score a critical hit or reduce a creature to zero HP, we can make a melee weapon attack as a bonus action. So that's nice as well. It'll be a little bit of a stronger attack than our Polar Master bonus attack, because that's just a D4, and this is a full melee weapon attack with our D10. Then at level 5, we are going to pick up extra attack right before we start multiclassing. And we are, of course, multiclassing into Barbarian, like the title says. And we are going to take three levels of Barbarian here, and we're actually going to go into Totem Warrior. Once again, I want to call out that this is not the optimized way to go. I would say probably Zealot Barbarian is going to give you more bang for your buck, at least DPS-wise. Uh, but I want to go for a Bear Totem because I just think it's really cool. So that's what I'm doing. Along the way, we are going to get some of the Barbarian's brilliantly front-loaded excellent features, including Rage, giving us resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, and an extra plus two to damage on attacks we make with our strength, which is all of them. We're a strength-based character. We also get Reckless Attack, giving us the option to attack with advantage whenever we want at the cost of everyone attacking us with advantage. But still, that is going to increase our damage output significantly. We also get Danger Sense, which is a really cool feature. And as a Bear Totem Barbarian, we actually get resistance to all damage except Psychic Damage. We become quite the little tank with this feature. 
At this point, we want to jump back to Fighter all the way to Fighter level 11 so that we can get our extra attack improvement and attack three times instead of twice whenever we take the attack action. We also will pick up Indomitable along the way, which is a really good feature. allows us to re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. We will also get four more Battlemaster maneuvers along the way. And I will say, just take whatever you want here. There's a lot of good ones. You could take Trip Attack, Disarming Strike. Really, it's dealer's choice here. You're going to have plenty of maneuvers to choose from at this point. So just go crazy. Get what speaks to you. You will also get a couple of ability score improvements along the way, and I would say cap out your strength with those. You can maybe take the Sentinel feat, uh, like I mentioned earlier. You could maybe take the Tough feat, bump up your HP, or just improve your constitution. There's a lot of options. I would start with capping out your strength score, though. That would be my big priority. And then for the rest of the build after this, I would say take the rest in Barbarian levels. You'll get some pretty cool stuff along the way. You'll get fast movement at 5th level of Barbarian, and your capstone will be Brutal Critical. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and if you haven't taken Sentinel by now, you can do it with one of the Barbarian's ability score improvements. It's a good feat, and it pairs really well with Polar Master. You know, that opportunity attack you can make when they enter your reach and then stopping them dead in their tracks. It's, it's a nice little feature. So, here is a look at what your character sheet might look at at level 20. We have over 200 HP, which is always nice. Uh, an armor class of 17 with half plate. Again, that's if we haven't discovered any magical armor along the way, or a ring of protection, or anything like that. Uh, we actually have proficiency in several skills. That's because I took the uh, tiger uh, option as the second option you get at level 6 of Barbarian for your uh, Primal Paths, and you get a couple of skills with that. Uh, so you can actually make this character into a bit of a skill monkey even, which is an interesting avenue to go with what is mainly a combat character. But with that aside, you are a phenomenal damage dealer. Between Polar Master, Great Weapon Master, you're dealing a lot of damage. You can add Battle Master maneuvers for even more. And you can just really go ham on things with this kind of a build. It's, it's a lot of fun to play. So I hope you enjoy the build, and I will see you guys next time. Later.